Yakuza 4. Everybody's seventh favorite Yakuza game. If you ask someone what they think about Yakuza 4, they'll usually say something like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good. I feel like, generally speaking, people don't hate it, but they don't absolutely love it either. But today, I'm going to try to explain why it's one of my favorites. First off, the four playable characters all feel different from each other, and they're all fun to play as. Akiyama is a great starting character. His basic combos are super fast and satisfying to use. And you can even infinitely bounce enemies off walls, which I clearly can do. Saijima is a bit slower, but packs more of a punch with his charge attacks. He's probably my least favorite character, but still fun. Then we have Tanimura. Tanimura has a parry, which makes him more of a technical fighter. He's a little harder to master than the other characters, but when you do master him, he has one of the smoothest looking fighting styles in the series. Again, clearly not the case for me. What I also like about Tanimura is that you can extend a lot of his heat actions if you perform them enough times. I thought that was a cool idea. It encourages you to try a different heat action. Speaking of which, Yakuza 4 has the best level up system. You obtain orbs by leveling up and you can then use those orbs to unlock the moves that you want. You don't have to unlock 10 other moves or do extremely specific tasks. The final playable character is Kazuma Kiryu, the myth, the legend. I like how he retains some of his moves that you had to unlock in Yakuza 3. Not only is it good continuity, but it makes you feel really powerful, which makes sense, you're the dragon of Dojima. Also, you only get to play as him towards the end of the game, so it's like a reward for getting this far. All of these different playstyles only take a few seconds to get used to, and they keep the game varied, not only during the fights, but also in how you experience the district of Kamurocho. I think Yakuza 4 has my favorite version of Kamurocho. I adore how it looks in this game, especially at night under the rain. So cozy. The added sections like the rooftops or the underground subway make this place feel more alive. Even though there's not a lot to do in these parts, I like to go up to the rooftops to unwind and take a break from the busy streets. The atmosphere in Yakuza 4's Komorocho has a special kind of feel to it. Sure, it can be relaxing, but it also feels darker. More dangerous. Maybe I was influenced by how it was advertised in the West. I mean, look at this box art. Wow, this sure is Tokyo's red light district. Look at all the red. Red is the color of blood, violence, sex, sexy girls. I get it. I think we get it. And who could forget that trailer? These guys are so tough, they don't even use umbrellas. <gasps> Maybe it's because you're playing as two civilians and a guy that was in prison for 25 years running from the police. But there's a certain uneasiness when walking the streets of Kamurocho. This game's unique atmosphere could also be attributed to the amazing soundtrack. I think it's my favorite with Yakuza 0. The panicky jazz themes like Thagmox Viper and Nervousness, the mixture of intense and somber rock music like Material Delights and Solitude. And of course we have the national anthem of Yakuza fans around the world, for faith. Nothing but classics. Another thing that's great about this game's Kamurocho is that each character offers a unique perspective of the district. Akiyama is the everyman, which again makes him a great starting character. He interacts with all kinds of people, people working in business and finance. He also plays a part in Kamurocho's hostess business. As Saijima, you spend a lot of time in the underground parts of Kamurocho, interacting with homeless people and social outcasts with Tanimura. You get to see how the police deals with all the crazy shit going on in Kamurocho. You also spend a lot of time in Little Asia, interacting with the district's immigrants. As Kiryu, you get to interact with the various old characters, and see how the Dragon of Dojima changed the city and the people living in it for the better. We're not going to talk about the story because it uh, sucks. It's one of the weakest in the series, but that's not something I value that much in a game. There's a ton of hype moments. The actual campaign is great and the pacing is pretty good in my opinion, even though there are a few uneven chapters. But uh, that's it, that's the video. Thanks for watching, goodbye.